I've been using this picture in some recent talks and uh, I've been asked a lot about sort of do you have any videos on it because what we're doing is we are taking an image that was taken in daylight now I actually thought it was in a nice pool of light downloaded the picture lo and behold it was just like that which is pretty unremarkable but in a few short stages we can actually bring it to something a little bit more like that which I quite liked anyway I thought I'd give it a go put it as a video but having a change from the bluebells this is an apple I picked earlier, well I didn't actually pick it, it fell off a tree, and uh, I thought, yeah, we can do exactly the same technique with this. So, the first stage, and what we'll want to do is really darken everything down, so we're just going to simply use Command J or Control J on a PC to duplicate the background layer. That's Command J on a Mac, it's Control J on a PC. Next, come into the blend mode clicking on this we're going to drop down and we're going to select multiply now multiply is going to darken everything right down let's just take a look there's the before there's the after a little bit too severe not going to worry going to come down we're going to click on this icon which we'll put in a layer mask there it is there popping across to the toolbox we're going to pick up the gradient tool we're going to come up making sure we've got the radial gradient that's the second one in clicking in the little window there because we don't want the foreground to background the black to the white we want the foreground to transparent so make sure we're working foreground through to transparent otherwise it will not work click OK to that coming across even further the opacity no you don't want to go in all guns blazing we're going to change this from 100 percent I'm simply going to press 7 on the keyboard which will reduce that the opacity down to 70 percent now we can come into the image I'm going to click down drag it out come out of fairway because with the gradient tool it gives a nice soft edge to it and that's the reason why I'm using this as opposed to the, the brush tool because it gives a softer edge. It's given a nice soft gradient out over there, so it's not going to be there's not going to be any telltale signs, is what I was thinking of saying. And uh, coming around this area, and let's come down this blade of grass because I want to bring the lighting through like that. So that looks pretty good. Bringing up those little rain droplets, dew droplets, whatever they are. It's quite early in the morning, so I think it was dew droplets besides it hadn't rained either so it's got to be due so coming down this area here before you all discover that I know nothing about the weather around here so coming down that area there and around this area here great stuff right so and you go with it oh I think oh no that doesn't look particularly good there just press X on the keyboard that has now put white as a foreground color so we can actually paint that back out brilliant or what right X again we can come in and we can just brighten up now again that's just a little bit too bright so just toning that down that looks better there coming back just put black as the foreground color over that area great stuff right for the next thing what we're going to do now is we're going to come down to this little icon here we're going to click on this from the drop down menu selecting levels this is going to put layers in as an adjustment layer there it is it's arrived now no surprises the histogram here is back from the mid-tone area through into the darker tones there if we just grab hold of this we can move it across and you notice the way we can brighten the image up a little bit perhaps just tweaking it a little bit more with the center slider there just looking at the tones coming through in this area that looks pretty good and if we just take a look there's the before there's the after great stuff that's gone in and as an adjustment layer it is fully adjustable at a later stage right for the next thing we're going to go to channels so we're going to click on this icon here this opens the channel there you can see the RGB coming to the very top one there clicking on this bringing the cursor across if you bring or hold down should I say the command key on a Mac that's control key on a PC you'll notice the way the cursor changes clicking down a selection has appeared now this is from the lightest tones through to the mid-tones. We've selected the light tones through to the mid-tones. What we need to do is to inverse this. Select Inverse, Shift Command and I or Control Shift I will do it just as quickly. There it is, that's we've inversed the selection. Next thing is to go to Layer. We're going to go to New Fill Layer. We're going to go to Solid Color. It's telling us it's going to call it Color Fill 1, which is brilliant. We're going to click OK to that. Right, there is our color picker. It's arrived with a very dark image in the background. I'm going to come down and select that. Looks pretty reasonable like that. And we're going to click, perhaps just darken it down a wee bit. Going to click OK to that. And you're thinking, that looks stunning. What a piece of modern art. We're going to change the blend mode to multiply. 
looks better. Clicking in and out, you can see the difference that's made to the image. We can come to this, we can now use the color picker, we can move this around until we get the colors and tones in the image we want. I'm going to bring it over this way here. I'm just looking mainly around that area of our apple there. We can bring this through, might want to just bring it into the reds a little bit more perhaps. Entirely up to you, just play with it until you get a color and a tone that works with your image. Click OK to that. Once again, we have a mask. Click in just to make sure we're working on the mask. Black is the foreground color. The gradient tool is selected. It is, don't forget, the foreground transparent, which is ideal, and the opacity is still at 70%. We're going to click down. I'm just actually going to erase this part here just to bring through the lightness a little bit more and bring it through. I want to bring through the greens on the leaves here just to bring that through like that and just coming down around this area just bringing those back into play and just over that like that and you can see the black coming through on the layer mask there fantastic it's still going to allow us we can still come into this we can click on this we can still come through we can so you might want to change the tones a little bit you perhaps want to go for a bit of green and sort of just freshen it up with a bit of green. It's entirely up to you. The whole thing is completely adjustable right the way through. Let's just go back more into that area there. Quite like that. Let's click OK. There it is. Job done. Let's just take a look. There's the before. There's the after. This particular image, it hasn't been sharpened at all, so I'm just going to run an action on it for the next stage. Um, but you know, there's the finished image, exactly the same technique as this one here. As I said, let's just run an action on This is from the, the new action pack. I'm just going to simply do the uh, 1024. It's going to resize it to 1024 on the long side, 3D black. Let's click play to that. That's going to shoot through. There is the sharpening on the end there. That's the, the default one I've selected. That looks pretty good. Let's click OK. There it is, bringing it up to that area. Once again, we can come in, just going to press X on the keyboard because I've still got my gradient tool. I can just sharpen the areas in the image now where I want it to be nice and sharp so it allows for selective sharpening. You can see the whole thing is kept in layers, which will allow us to come through finishing off. And this, as I say, is from the, the new action pack, the resize and frames. Talking of frames, that stroke is just a little bit on the wide side. So let's drop that down a touch so it's fully flexible. The inner shadow, let's just take a look at that. And you can see there it is there working just like a bit of a vignette. That looks good. Click OK. Job done. We can now simply click on that one. It's Control E or Command D. Drop it down. There is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. It really does work a treat. It just allows you to transform your pictures as we have seen in our bluebells here. And you can see it's exactly the same technique. We can transform them from that sort of thing. There. There's our apple. Give it a try. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.